There is a story about an ancient lemon tree. The tree grew in a courtyard at the center of a family home. And over the years, many wonderful things were made from its fruit. And in turn, the tree became more than just a plant. It became a member of the family, something of great nostalgic quality, linking the family to their ancestors. Now, buildings can do the very same thing, and the desire to preserve old buildings is strong. But of course, there is a need to modernize, to add a new flavor. But much like experimenting with preserves, You'll only know it's worked once it's done. The traditional border between Canterbury and Otago in the South Island runs right through the middle of the Waitaki River. The Waitaki Valley itself is home to Station Peak, land farmed by the Pavletich family for over 100 years, and now run by Mike and Olivia Pavletich. This is the farm. A bit of hill and a bit of flat. Two dairy sheds, milking just over 1,000 cows per shed. Modern irrigation opened up the station to dairy farming. But before that, it was all sheep and beef. And even though times change, Mike says you cannot beat the lifestyle. Having a rural childhood is pretty cool. Just being able to get out in the hills, get around the farm. I schooled up the Hacker Valley. I haven't really gone too far, to be fair. I brought a wife in from out of the community, so that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia hails from a sheep and cropping farm at Southbridge near Christchurch. And she was in here Gumboots and all. There's something about this place, and there's just something about this lifestyle, and we're so lucky. Mike and Olivia's children, Jack, Elise, and Sophia, all muck in around the farm. For them, it's second nature. This is Frosty. She's our family horse, and she's retired. Mum and Dad are very, very busy, I reckon. The farm. The house, they've got a lot, of go a lot going on. Mike, Olivia and the children live with Mike's grandparents in their house at Station Peak. But they have their hearts set on restoring the old cottage next door. Walnut Cottage was built in the 1860s and has been many things over many years, including Mike's family home. A few people think we're quite mad putting all our savings into a house, but it's not just a house. That house tells a story, so much history, so much character. It just deserves its time, and, and we want to give it that and, and show it the respect I think it deserves. It's going to be really fun living in the house that Dad grew up in. Mum and Dad, they deserve a really good home. We really want to do it justice. All we can say is we're going to do yeah. our best. Clearly then, this project is personal. But renovating anything is hard work, and restoring such an old cottage could well be next level difficult. G'day. G'day, g'day, how are you? Very good. Olivia, lovely hey, to Olivia. meet you. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Nice to meet you, mate, how are you? Yeah, very good. What a lovely whitewashed cottage. It's very pretty. Yeah. So this is a place of great meaning for the family and for you too. Yeah, it is. This is the first place we actually lived in when we came home from overseas, when we were unmarried and childless. I always knew that it was really special to Mike, and he's always, you know, you've always held it in your heart. There's plenty of memories that I've had over the years in here, and it's just yeah. trying to re-establish them for my own kids, I suppose, and ourselves. And... It's a gorgeous home. Everyone loves it. We're so excited. The old stone cottage looks in reasonable condition from the outside, but inside, I suspect it may be a different story. There's a few wee cracks and bits and bobs, but a few wee cracks, he says. <laughs> yeah. I think originally you're excited by what it looks like, but then you think, oh my goodness, now you know what it looks like. Is this going to fall down around us? We've 
we're going to lie if we didn't consider the fact that, oh, why don't we just build new on the farm somewhere, you know, on a better, better location up on the hill. But your heart just comes back to what you think is best for the historic side of the farm and the family and the history and all that. Etchings on the walls, there's graffiti, there's drawings, there's rabbit tallies, there's people's names. It, yeah, it's pretty cool. Incredible horse carved into the fireplace there. Yeah, that is. It's, uh, it's amazing, actually. It was one of our most exciting finds. We love it. They're the cool things that we want to try and hero yes. as much as we can. This is pretty amazing, isn't it? The relic of the old roof. We want to obviously showcase what's been hidden for so many years. I mean, put a glass panel up or something like that so that we can actually see. You so know. it's going to stay exposed. That's, so that's, cool. That's the plan. The original L-shaped walnut cottage combines in the new build with a large, modern extension on one side and a smaller one at the back. Through the front door and turn left into a cosy study or right into a small sitting room. Staying in the old cottage, Jack's bedroom has an ensuite, then onto a guest bedroom, Elise's bedroom, the family bathroom, and Sophia's bedroom at the end. A hallway leads to the first extension, containing the master bedroom, walk-in wardrobe and ensuite. An original rubble stone wall will be restored and left exposed as a memory of the past. Across the vast north-facing deck and paved terrace with raised planters and into the main extension with its dramatic high ridge roofline. The large living room links open plan style with the designer kitchen, complete with walk-in pantry. The laundry and second toilet are next door. The generous dining room features a double-sided fireplace at the lounge end, with sliding doors opening right out to the terrace, and a glass corridor to the bedroom wing featuring more restored original walls. Cladding here is steel and timber, while roofing steel caps off a house that honors the past and looks forward to the future. So no half measures here, you're all in. We're all in. Once in a lifetime opportunity, you just have to make a decision and go with it, and we're really excited that we have, and we'll just deal with the finances as it comes. Where are you with that? Have you had an estimate? The figure is one and a half million. It's going to take up all our life savings till now, really. Right. Uh, this is what we decided to do, with a little bit of uh, help from our good old friend, the bank. There's a lot of toing and froing and compromising and trying to blend, you know, old and new whether we go mm. really expensive for this or, you know, there's just compromises all yeah. the way through. What's your feeling at the moment? How long is this going to take? We'd like to think that we'd be in for winter. May, June, July. Just, yeah. Oh, this thing, I'll, I'll say that <laughs> I've just got to keep on the builder's tail to make sure he's here every day, day in, day out, slogging yeah. away. Well, thank you. I mean, fantastic place here, great project. I wish you the best of luck. Looking forward to thank seeing you. great progress next time I'm here. Hopefully all yeah. positives to report on and no headaches. There, there never are, surely. <laughs> <laughs> the romance of the ruin. There's so much character in this building and layers of stories. And Olivia and Mike want to preserve all of that history for at least another 150 years. But now comes the hard part. They're going to have to take so much care over every decision in order not to erode that vision. Mike and Olivia chose Christchurch architect Greg Miller for their project. They knew of his work rebuilding the Holy Trinity Avonside Church after the 2011 earthquake. One of Greg's main principles for this project was to invest time in historical research, and that has paid dividends. One of the really neat discoveries once we got the archaeologists involved, he was able to track down a really old photo showing the original homestead and cottage there before it was plastered. We've got stone walls contrasting limestone coining around the corners and sadly we're not going to be able to restore it to that condition because the plaster has been put on to protect the, the stone which had sort of eroded over, over the years I suspect but it's really nice see, seeing what was there originally it gives us a, a sense of, of what we should be aiming for. They're not under any illusions that it's going to be a, a straightforward project. A house of that age you don't know what's going to be there once you start removing elements and then discovering how, how it's been made up. It presents all sorts of challenges. Right, 
Right. So, what are you going to do? Early spring and piece by piece, the original Tortora floors are being carefully taken out of Walnut Cottage. Mike and Ben, the builder, are hoping that some of the floorboards can be recycled. You can see in that other room, there's a lot of splits in there, which might be a bit of trouble. But this one here is touch wood. A bit, bit better than that, eh? Yeah. We've ripped these up in the hope that we could reuse these and use them in the entrance, which is this space we're in now. Tidy them up and make them look brand new. It'll be really quite cool. A real good build to be a part of. Like, it's not just doing like a nice new house sort of thing. We're working with the old and trying to bring it into the future, I suppose. There you go, mate. You can take that home for the kids for dinner. Oh, ripper. Yeah, that's Johnny. He's a family resident. Been in the house for about 140 years. And then a clay pipe as well. I frame them and put them on the wall. It's my thank you to you. However, the early work has uncovered something that is no laughing matter. The old cottage has a serious damp issue. As you can see down here in the ground, there's a lot of moisture coming through, and it's seeping through the block work because the ground level is up quite high. And we've got a hill right there. It's just slowly coming down the hill and seeping. And that's where we're getting it through the foundation of this old extension. We're going to have to dig the footings deeper, so that's more concrete, more steel. It's more cost to the client that we've got to pass on. But unfortunately, we have to do it. There's no point building it up high. With this moisture, it's just going to sink. Mike and Olivia had every opportunity to choose the easier option, to build a new house here. And they had over 1,300 hectares of Station Peak to choose from. The decision to restore the cottage and to preserve the heritage here is admirable, but full of potential pitfalls. And they've just discovered a major one at the very start of the build. To sort out the moisture issue in historic Walnut Cottage, Mike and Ben have had to dig down to solid ground removing a whopping 80 cubic metres of soil. Now, though, they can finally pour the slab foundations around a dense network of heating pipes. It's looking good. It's Onwards and upwards. Hopefully, that's the back of it. You happy? I'm bloody happy. Yeah. I'm going to come back tomorrow. It's all going to be down. It'll be lovely. Yeah. Going good, guys. Good effort. Finally, being able to work above ground level is reassuring for Mike. But the unexpected extra work has come at a substantial cost. We're probably touching on 300k so far, and really haven't seen much progress. So it's a wee bit depressing, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm hoping Olivia can really trim back her costs on the interior side of things, which would be two thumbs up from my perspective. With the build underway, Olivia is working with her interior designer, Sarah, to finalise the interior aesthetic. I really love that, because obviously we're getting these vanities made yep. out of the wood from the house. Yes. And then if we are going to re-enamel that bath, like maybe we should be thinking about a colour there. They're planning to recycle what they can from the original cottage, to retain character and to save money. But some parts will have to be modern. The kitchen, for instance, they're thinking Italian marble, but... If we're going to achieve having the bench and the back part and the splash bat, we need three separate slabs. And that, including the GST, is going to come to about 39,000. OK. Um, which is perhaps slightly more than we budgeted on. It's a hard one because, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of money. But it was that gut instinct that we both loved it when we saw it for so many reasons. It's not off the table. Yeah because this is our forever home. I don't want to end up regretting it, but yeah, it's gonna be worth it. The cost is clearly a shock, and it will certainly make for an interesting conversation when Mike gets in from the farm this evening. I don't get back to the Waitaki Valley until the new year. But before I visit Station Peak, 
I've been invited just down the road to Patterson's Cottage, one of the area's other heritage treasures. We're very proud of this building, really, because we've put a lot of effort into it to get it restored. Well, it's lovely, isn't it? It's cob construction, right? Yes, it's cob. The clay came from the Penicotico stream, and it was mixed with tussock and shingle. This Category 1 heritage building dates all the way back to 1872, and the fact that it is still here today is in no small part due to the efforts of local community volunteers. It was built in blocks yeah. and all put together, and the foundations are um, local river stone. Yeah, look at those. You, you can almost imagine that person laying that piece of river stone that just carted it up the road, and it, it really connects you with this location. Plus, it had some work to, to keep it looking like it is now. Absolutely. Right. We've got wonderful volunteers in Waimati District who've come out and helped us, and particularly, too, with the cob work being replaced. You know, yeah. you always have to keep mending it. Yeah. Old buildings, of course, demand regular and ongoing maintenance, and that can easily be underestimated. I trust that it hasn't been overlooked by Mike and Olivia. Come on to Patterson's Cottage. Goodness, I mean, you're transported to another age, aren't you? The atmosphere in here. And then there's writing on the wall here, just like at Mike and Olivia's place. It's always the youngsters who do the graffiti, right? And they're like, oh, there's a, a lovely photo there. Now, that there. photo is 1928, so it just shows you how dilapidated it was. Yeah. But they are the original shingles before corrugated iron was put over top to ensure the building would be preserved so important to preserve these beautiful old buildings for future generations. Walnut Cottage is even older than Patterson's, a lot bigger too, and Mike and Olivia don't have a team of keen volunteers on hand either. They're finding out firsthand, and by themselves, how difficult and expensive restoring a heritage building can be. Ah. I like what you've done with the place. Yeah. It's work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, this has come up, hasn't it? The floor's there. Concrete's good. down. Yeah. Good to have yeah. the floor down. Looking good. The head's a little low there, isn't it, now? Yeah. You get yeah. through? I, just. I just can. at the moment. What's happened to the horse? Oh, the horse. Yeah, it's broken its front legs. <laughs> Just a bit of an accident when the builders were taking down some of the, the linings and but, but we have got we have got photographs of it in its entirety that we can yeah. jam up there. The horse will be there. It'll just be a lovely framed photograph. So where else are you treading carefully? The original external walls, which we're wanting to sandblast. That's going to be really intricate and tricky and is making me really nervous. So the sandblasting process is, yeah. can be a little bit aggressive, so you have to be quite careful with that, right? He's going to be very, very careful. A few so little... tells me. Mm. I might have to get That's in there with my little chisel or my toothbrush or something just to make it right. It's almost like archaeology, isn't it? You've got to, you've got to be so careful because once you know it's there and if you, if you damage it, then it's damaged, it's, it's gone. As well as restoring some of those original walls, there's also a plan to display the only remaining remnant of the original clinker tile roof behind a glass screen. Preserving building fabric whilst modernizing can be challenging, and best intentions may not always be enough. I'm worried if the process will start and then it's, it all starts crumbling apart. One wall's relatively hardy. The one that's going to be in the hallway is going to be the tricky one. I think mm. it's little stones with a whole heap of mud and rock. And we get to the end of the project and it's plastered over, you know it was a bit of a failure. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Although most of the Walnut Cottage dates from the 1860s, this lean-to extension here was built by Mike's parents 100 years later in the 1960s. Its time is now up. The valuable north-facing land it sits on is needed for the large open terrace and the impressive new kitchen and living room wing. Hopefully the cuts are in the right place and it all just comes away as we're hoping it will. But we will see. 
As it turns out, the lean-to is no match for Mike's demolition skills. It possibly even works as a bit of stress relief. I think Mike was getting a bit carried away. I thought he'd just keep going and I going know, and going. I it know. was good fun. That's what happens, isn't it? It's all a bit exciting. It was. Home demo at its best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> back, to their, back to the original footprint now. Yeah. Get in there. Getting rid of the 1960s extension was an easy decision. It had no heritage value, and with its demolition, you get the feeling that the old building can breathe again. However, as Mike and Olivia continue to navigate a delicate path between preservation and modernization, I suspect there'll be more difficult decisions ahead. By May, at Station Peak, work is just starting up again after a two-month stand-down. Changing the design of part of the roof has meant applying for a time-consuming variation on the building consent. Now the build's back on, Mike and Olivia are calling in family and friends to boost the workforce wherever they can. I haven't got the foggiest idea what I'm doing, but I'm an ex-farmer and I just love doing it. Finished. And I fully endorse what Olivia and Mike are doing. It's a real challenge, and I just want to be there for them and help them. And it's going to look magnificent when it's finished. Finishing must seem a long way off, though. And in the meantime, the dollars ebb inexorably away. The money thing is starting to hurt a little bit and just wakes you up in the night. But that's, that's life. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's freaking me out. Hopefully it'll uh, just be all plain sailing from here. Restoring the heritage fabric of the old cottage was always going to be a labour of love with the walls in particular demanding a lot of time and attention. This exterior wall, for example, is being painstakingly transformed into a dramatic interior wall. It's come out pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. It's not at all what I remember. No, well, last time you saw it was all white, covered in plaster and paint and... Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, these, these are hand-split. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle with no instructions. Yeah. Mm. it would be an awesome feature wall inside. So you got, what will you do with it? Nothing. But I feel like anything we do is potentially going to change the look of it. Sure. I just love it. I love the raw. Authenticity it's, of it. It's just... That's yeah, the word. We're so happy with yeah. it. Yeah. Inside, it's good to see that the framing is progressing. And I'm keen for an update on everything else. The roofing that we had up here, which was from the original building, yes. we were going to have a glass panel there uh, so we could view it. it. But we wouldn't be able to see it from the hallway. So we'd have to have a glass panel there and then we'd have to have a glass panel in this room as well. And Getting just, better. yeah, wow. a bit niggly. And is it worth it? Yeah, that's cool. How do you but, feel about that? Um, I'm oh, in two minds, but it makes sense. And, you know, it We've got photographs. We can showcase it. Other ways. Don't really it, want so. it like a patchwork house where there's a bit of this and a bit of that. And yeah, you know, yeah. Like... Yeah, no, that is difficult. You don't, you, you don't want uh, random, strange things in a house. It's got to be cohesive. Mm. You've got to have a functional house at the end of it. And you're doing that, right? Mm. Trying. OK. I think so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. You're making me so think again now, Tom. No. <laughs> <laughs> at this stage of a build, there's little room for nice-to-haves. What's possible and what's not now comes down to what is simply achievable and affordable. It's been great seeing the clear progress that Mike and Olivia are making and seeing this lovely old wall exposed, breathing again, standing proud. You know, those decisions they've had to make about covering up the clinker roof, the fireplace, those evocative pieces of architectural and human history have been really hard. But they're pertinent decisions. I mean, how do you make an old house like this relevant, warm, comfortable, without somehow homogenizing it? 
as this lovely old building begins to weave itself back together. It'll be intriguing to see if it can hold on to that historical magic. That's why we're here. Finally, time now to pour the concrete pad for the new kitchen, lounge and dining room. As is often the case, this concrete covers up an enormous amount of time-consuming and costly preparation work. There's been so much that's gone on underneath the concrete. It's like months of work and engineering and plumbing, and the boys have done such an amazing job. So today is like the icing on the cake. It's exciting for me. With the restoration of the cottage, Olivia and Mike have been lucky to find Owen King, an expert traditional joiner in what some might say is a dying craft. We have these beautiful timber windows in there, and we wanted to keep that heritage and have that nod to that history. So instead of pulling them out and putting all aluminium in the old place, it just wasn't going to be right. So we've got an incredible joiner who has taken them all out and meticulously rebuilt them every single little bit. So they've been, you know, almost remodeled back to what was the original. Getting everything right in this special project requires great attention to detail, and that's expensive. Something Olivia knows all too well when she does the finances. So the budget has definitely blown out and we've used all our savings, and we're now eating into our bank loan. You know, our income comes from our milk, and, you know, last week uh, there was a big downgrade in the milk payout, so that meant our contingency has now literally disappeared overnight. Mike came home one day, and he said, we're not, we're not going to be in here until next year. He realised that, don't you? And I was like, you know, I sort of like sunk. And I'm like, why? You know, like, surely, you know, we've got to be making like some quick progress soon, you know? Uh, he's like, I just, there's just so much to do. I just don't think it's going to be achievable. And I'm like, I really, I really wanted to be in by Christmas. But yeah, testament to our team. Again, they've just absolutely hit the straps and they're like, no, we're going to get this done. If the family's in the cottage by Christmas, the build will have taken five months more than they'd hoped for. So not disastrous. The accompanying budget overspend, on the other hand, is another matter. While there's progress, hopefully Mike and Olivia can remain positive, but certainly they can't afford any more delays. It's October already, and while the renovation work inside Walnut Cottage continues, they really need to crack the whip on the main extension to have any chance of moving in by Christmas. We're trying to get the inside stage one tucked away, and now we're just going to be flat tack on stage two. Just thinking about how much work has actually got to get done. <laughs> This wing is quite a contrast to the small rooms amongst the thick stone walls of the original cottage. These spaces, the kitchen, lounge and dining room, will become the new heart of the house. Oh, this is awesome. It is. It's so good. I can visualize the space. We're in the kitchen. Get my bench. And look at that stone wall with the light coming in. Mm. There are inklings of what promises to be an enjoyable marriage between old and new, but with the loss of many of the features that the couple were planning to save, I do fear that that marriage may become somewhat lopsided. That's the old original, so we're going to take all this out. Yeah, take the bricks out, and then if we can do that steel plate. I think we were nervous initially about doing it justice, doing it right, and I think we're far enough through now that we feel that we have achieved that or that we're going to achieve that. So the only thing I'm nervous about is how we're going to pay for it, to be honest. You know, we're at the tail end now. You really start to count your pennies. Yes, we'll be in for Christmas. If we're not, I'm having Christmas dinner with the builder. 
<laughs> and he's going to have all my family, and I've got a big family, Ben, so just be prepared. With the Pavlitich family farming the land here for the last hundred years, there's a deep personal connection with the history of Walnut Cottage. And Mike and Olivia know the best way to preserve it is to get the next generation interested as well. It's making me feel old, team. These are all photos of Dad growing up, and he grew up in the White Cottage. There's Granddad again. It's, uh, yeah, cool looking through some of the photos and things with the kids, just what it all was when I was a kid and even before. Pretty cool to enlighten the kids on what was before us. <laughs> Have you kids seen these diaries? No. Station Peak Farm Diaries. 1937, 1939, and 1941. What was happening on the farm on this day in 1937? Springboks played South Canary today in 1937, and the Springboks won 43 points to six. The things that we've had to compromise on, we've still been able to capture them and capture the essence and the history and we can still frame the photos and put them on the walls and stuff like that so it's just a really cool reminder when we walk past and see oh that's right that's what's behind those walls the future generations could look back and be able to see what we did and have that same excitement dad dad who's that dad Another fine spring day in the Waitaki Valley. Great weather for building, with that Christmas deadline fast approaching. Now this is brilliant. Look, Olivia painting, roofers, sparkies, diggers, big holes in the ground, more vehicles in the supermarket car park. This project is steaming along. Good thing too. Anyone with arms and legs has been brought in to help, and the to-do list is frighteningly long. Olivia's dad, Bill, is back on the tools. I found a labourer. You found a labourer? Another... What's going on here? I'm virtually the clean-up man, and we've lost our power, so we've got to do it by... Brute force? Well, that's Brute... why you got Jack there, is it? That's why we've got Jack yeah. holding the... Uh... The wrecker bar. The wrecker bar. Olivia's mum is also on the job. I've been trying to paint for weeks, and she keeps saying, no, mum, I know you've got enough to do. But I got up here in the end. Great. Yes. Desperate times. Right. <laughs> I don't want to disturb the willing workers, so I get youngest daughter Elise to show me around her new home. Oh, I like what you've done with the place, Elise. Yeah. Yeah? This is the pantry. The pantry? Yeah, and it goes... Oh, yeah. This is the kitchen here. Oh, it's going to be lovely and sunny, isn't it? Yeah. Going to play hide-and-seeking. What do you think about this big old gnarly wall, Elise? Good. Yeah? Yeah. This was like... This is the old building, right? Yeah. Think brings back some memories. Does it? Yeah. This here's my room. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah. I like your big window. Yeah. <laughs> Here we're coming into Mum and Dad's room. This is cool, isn't it? They've got yeah. more old wall there. And I love your Mum and Dad's light fitting. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. There are projects where fit-out and decoration can come together quickly, and this is certainly an instance where a good run is required. But really, a few short weeks to get this whole house, old and new, up to the stage where the family can move in, that is a monumental ask. It's really interesting seeing it at this stage because all these extra pieces really change the character mm. of the original house. Yeah. And so, does it work? You'll only really know at the end, don't you? Yeah. Well, Do you I feel mean, like that? Uh, there's a bit of suspense. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're all eager to get in. And, and uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't know how it's going to be even living in the home again. You know, like, I haven't lived here since I was probably... 13. So, you know, now I'm 41. So it might not be 100%, but I'm pretty damn confident it's going to be. 
You've got to love Mike's confidence. But that is a challenge indeed. This build has been marked by both ambition and pragmatism and has had its fair share of complications. I'm wondering now what the final outcome will be and whether the spirit of Walnut Cottage will prevail. If you look closely, you'll still see the ancient cottage standing resolutely amongst all of this construction turmoil. But with that turmoil, this project has firmly moved from the past into the present and the future even. But will the future that Mike and Olivia are building here be as special as this building's storied past? This whole project has reminded me of just how new the built environment in New Zealand is. I mean, our most ancient buildings are mere babies compared to those in Europe, or even the New World, the Americas. And so we've got to treat these rare resources with utmost care. We've got to cherish them. And as Mike and Olivia found out, doing so takes great effort. And here we are, historic Walnut Cottage and no sign from the approach of the modern extensions. That's thoughtful architecture. Well, hello. Hello. Hey. How are you, mate? <laughs> I am very good, but <laughs> how are you? We're great. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. Truly. Yeah. We're good. Been busy, but great. The cottage looks just how it should look, original. Yeah, it hasn't changed a bit from the front here. But that's only a tiny part of the story. Yes. A little bit more behind the walls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come on in and have a look, Come eh? Have a look. Right, now, eyes adjusting to the light, and, well, I can say this without irony this time. It's been said a couple of times, but I really like what you've done with this space. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, it's a cool way. And the open fire has been reinstated, and we've taken some rock off the hill up behind us. Lovely colours. You've got a real variety of stone here. And then, uh, yeah, the mantle is the bearers and joists of the floor. And then, yeah, of course, the timber flooring, which was original as well, that's been lifted up and... And dressed and... Right, I, I'm guessing treated with quite a lot of care. Yes. Now, this is great. I mean, scale change, colour change, light glass, thoroughly modern. And, what, well, the history wall. The old the horse. Journey. Yeah. Yeah. All the different parts of what, you, what was behind the walls when we did the demo. Bit of wallpaper. The wallpaper. Yeah. We've just tried to capture the whole journey right through, really, from the demolition of the house to where it is today. And, and also the people, that was always a big one. The push that everyone's put in and the mahi everyone's put in to get us to where we are today. Look at that. Cool, it's eh? so gorgeous. I mean, another change of scale. Underneath a finely crafted upturned hull of a boat. What a beautiful space. It's cool coming from such a small, cosy, old-school environment into the expense. The light is the uh, reused floorboards again, or timber out of the it's old part. Oh, really, I would say that came from a uh, posh establishment on the high streets of Christchurch, but uh, there's a great sustainability story. Reuse. Yeah. This is the, what, $40,000 <laughs> court site from Italy. Do you like it? It's, uh, are you sure you, you pay for the right thing? There has been a bit of a story. Our actual bench shop is still on the water somewhere. We're not sure. So we've been really fortunate that we've been supplied with a temporary bench top in the meantime, which is fantastic. Adding new parts to an old building is most successful when the two are genuinely complementary or completely different. Either way, what's critical is getting right how they come together. Well, th this is low, and maybe for, for you too, Mike. Yeah. But actually, I think that's quite a clever way of handling this transition, how the new touches the old, because we're now going back into the spaces of the cottage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The old house, with its snug, low spaces and substantial walls, is now largely taken up with bedrooms, three for the kids and one for guests. 
plus the family bathroom. And through another graceful transition, the new master bedroom. So now we're, again, we're moving out of the old house. Yes, now the wall. Uh, it's great to be reminded of what's there, but taller room. So we're in yeah. a new bit. Yeah. This yeah. Is, as an extension. New extension. But this is different. This is a hotel away from home, <laughs> a ensuite. Wow, spa quality. Every single room is different. And yet there's this thread that flows through. You know, look at the bath here. This is a Victorian bath. Yeah, so that's re-enamelled and modernised. It was in the original cottage, so it fits the space beautifully. It does, fantastic. It's a great moment, isn't it, when you're not worrying about painting and flooring and you can sit here relax and just think about this beautiful house. To think how much has been accomplished over the last couple of months to be sitting in a completed house is pretty mind-boggling. What you've done with the cottage feels very respectful, but you've created something that's altogether different. It far supersedes what I had as a child. I think the builders actually really enjoyed having the best of both worlds because the old part of the house really challenged them. Would you think they describe it as a cool challenge, the, <laughs> the work that went into that? I think so. You know, a builder said it's like a once-in-a-lifetime build for him. That's how he feels. So that's really cool to have been able to provide that for him. And what about for you? Renovating a building of that age is a project in itself. Then you've got this other building. I mean, there's actually there's more than two projects here. Mm. <laughs> what a challenge. The cost is always a big one. It's all, it, nothing goes under budget in today's world, seemingly. Where we've landed is about 1.6, with maybe a couple of bills to come still. Probably a little bit outside our comfort zone. Right. But thankfully, uh, we love the house so much, we don't need to go anywhere for the rest of our lives, and we can sit here and take away and pay it off. You must be feeling really proud. Yeah, we are, yeah. Because you've done such a great job and you must have had that feedback. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. have. What do, what do your parents think, Mike? Uh, I think they were pretty overwhelmed. I haven't had the chance to talk to them about it, really, but no, it's pretty cool, yeah. That's got you. Mm. Oh, that's great. I mean, yeah. fantastic. It's, uh, you, you've done all the right things for all the right reasons and, you know, Architecturally, this is a joy, so well done. It feels like home to me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Buildings make places. Without this one, I'd be standing in a green valley by a river. They're landmarks that anchor people to their communities, to where they live, and this one has been doing that for well over a century. But of course, for Mike and Olivia, the associations run deeper, they're more personal, because their family has been here for almost the same amount of time. And so the reinvention of this place had to be good. And it is. Mike and Olivia have successfully respected the past. They've also created something that's uniquely theirs for now, because the most satisfying thing of all, perhaps, is that this building is now ready for the next hundred years.